uh, February 24th, 2019, and I'm at Jill Cavaliers and Bill's. And what's the name of your place? Four Bar Cottage Ranch. Uh, okay. And we were just talking. Um, Jill's was born here in Rodeo. And when was that? And what was your maiden name, your family name? Um, I was born Jill Strickland yep. on November 13th, 1962. Yep. In, in, well, I was born, my family lived in Rodeo, and um, the closest hospital was Douglas. So I was born at the uh, Douglas Hospital, and Dr. Smith delivered me. I think he delivered a lot of people around here. And... I was brought back to rodeo, and that's where I spent the next 18 years of my life. Did you have uh, brothers and sisters when you were growing up? Or? Two older sisters. I'm the, I'm the youngest. Yeah. Um, I have a sister, Linda. She's 11 years older than myself. And then Loretta is, came five years, six years later, and then me. And um, so the three of us were raised here. Well, and what was your fam when you were born, what was your family doing, your parents doing? Well, my, my dad was raised over in the Animus Valley, and he, um, he owned some property here in Rodeo, the, a ranch, um, which is now owned by Dan and Harriet Schultes. Well, Dan's gone, but Harriet mm -hmm. still owns that property. So that was my father's place. And um, he and his father purchased the bar here in Rodeo. And then some years later, he, several years later, he bought, married my mother, who was here. My grandmother on that side of the, on my mom's side of the family, lived here in Rodeo. She owned, or she was, owned the hotel, the old hotel down here in, in Rodeo. Yeah. Her parents um, ran it, and then as they aged and went on, she took over. I don't know that she really ran a, the hotel, per se, but she owned the building, and that's where she spent most of the rest of her life. And the hotel was where the store is now? Just south. Just It was the next building south. It's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I remember that building. I, there was a post office in the front, and um, I remember as a little girl being in that big old building and the wood floors and the, the grocery store that was there. And... Um, I remember at some point in time there was a scare about black pepper and there was a recall on black pepper. So we felt very fortunate because we had black pepper still because it was a <laughs> the store. And um, so that, that building's no longer there. But um, so my mom was here with her mother and met my dad who owned the bar and they married. And my sisters, uh, my mother already had my sisters, so we, in, we ended up, uh, in, you know, an instant big family. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we spent, we just spent our time here, and we had a wonderful, there was good and bad being raised in a bar. It, the building was just as it is now. It's yeah. been refurbished a little bit, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Um, but the half of the building was the bar and the other half was our home yeah. and yeah. we had a a um there's a, that slight there's the swinging door between the bar and the kitchen yeah. and that the door wasn't always there but um when we rent we my mom uh renovated the bar and the and put the kitchen in there yeah. um she moved that door and it was a it was a fun thing for us because we could see what was going on in the bar. Right. Right. And we had um, a curtain over the window so we could peek in and see who was sitting at the bar. And we couldn't see around the corner, but we had a, before microwaves, we had the, um, it was a Dar Sand company, and they provided sandwiches that you heated in these ovens. Uh -huh and almost like a toaster oven, and they, it sat here, 
And so we always had to keep things very clean and shiny. And it really provided a nice mirror so we could peek through the window and look in the reflection and see what was going on at the other end of the bar. <laughs> and people couldn't see you very well. And we, well, they, they couldn't see us, all. not at all. So we had a lot of fun and we saw things probably we shouldn't mm -hmm. have seen, mm -hmm. but it was, a, it was fun. What were, you said it was good and bad, and what were some of the good things about Oh gosh, there? there's a lot of good things. Okay, well tell me a few. Um, well, before the community center was open uh, or built, we, there was not much to do in rodeo. So my mother, who always liked a good time, she always tried to keep something going. She, and she, were, she really wanted to keep things happening for the kids. She always felt like the kids needed a place to go. So on Saturdays or after school, the kids could come in the bar and shoot pool, play the jukebox, um, have sodas, and, and but at five o'clock, then we had to all yeah. leave. It was yeah. the community of kids. My sisters and I were spread far enough apart yeah. that we all have a little bit different memories yeah. because it's just almost my oldest sister is almost a different generation yeah, than exactly. myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but. Yes, the community, and we had quite a few kids here at that time. We had a full bus load wow. of kids of all ages, huh. from kindergarten on up to high school. Where did and the kids? Where did you go to school then? Back in? I started kindergarten in. I didn't go to kindergarten. I started first grade at five years old here in Rodeo. Uh -huh. It was the last year that they had uh -huh. the school open. The building's still there. Somebody owns it. It's down across from the new post office. I don't remember. I think it was something like first through sixth grade. And I, I remember my, te my teacher's name was Mrs. Moss. And um, she, if I remember, if my memory is right, she had fuzzy red hair. <laughs> <laughs> but she, they lived in the teacherage um, over where, close to where Izzy Escobar uh -huh. lives. And um, I, so I went to my went to first grade there, and we had first and second grades in, in the same class. Yeah. And that was a really beautiful little school. It had a beautiful court, uh, playground. It was surrounded by trees, pine trees, and um, pyracantha bushes, yeah. and rose bushes. Yeah. And uh -huh. I have a picture of, of myself and two little girls standing in front of the school. And we used to fill our pockets with those pyracantha berries yeah. and eat them during class. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that was that was a nice a nice place to start school and and then we were bussed over to Animus after that. It was had an auditorium. I think I don't think it had I don't think we had a cafeteria in there. I think we all took our lunches or went home maybe yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. In my memory I think in my little classroom there probably was ten, twelve kids and that was first and second. So I don't, yeah. I think we only went up to sixth grade and yeah. then high school went on to, to Animus. Yeah. And then, like I said, they closed it down that year and we were all bust over there. Yeah. Well, there was always, like I said, my mom kept a lot of stuff going. So every, we tried, she tried once a month to do something. So oh. we had, we had a lot of dances, oh, nice. live bands. Um, diff, we had bands come from Douglas or Lordsburg and... Um, we had Junior Gomez's band, they yeah. played in a band and they, they performed there and that was always a good time. Until oh, everybody was, everybody, everybody was there. Yeah. And my mom ran a pretty tight ship, so no one really got out of hand too much. Yeah. If they did, they were gone they, and they weren't, yeah. they weren't going to come back in. Yeah. So we didn't really have too much trouble mm -hmm. um, in those days and, but there was, you know, People were looking for things to do. I mean, that was a good time to get together, and we didn't have, out here we only had two channels, and you had to have an antenna, and yeah. they weren't very good at that. <laughs> so um, people were always hoping that we would have something. We had, one time we had a, um, an opera, and, Tell me about <laughs> that, and it was a real one. It was, it was a 
pretty amazing oh, thing. A group came in to rodeo? No, a lady. Um, okay. There was a woman um, from Portal. Her name was, she, she wasn't native of here. She yeah. moved into Paradise. Her name is Marie Jansen. And she had a daughter. I can't think of her name, but a beautiful woman. And she was an opera singer, a light opera. Uh, and my mom, being my mom, she said, we could do something with this. So Marie was, of course, all about getting her daughter up on stage. Yeah. And the, the dance hall at that time had the original bandstand was higher up and it was right in the center yeah. okay. and um, we we had to figure out how to turn that dance hall you've been in there yes. in the in yeah. the restaurant now and yeah. it has those cartoon yeah. we had to figure out how to make that room look like somewhat like an opera house right. Right. <laughs> so it was quite a challenge but it was she always she always had us girls working trying to come up with things. So we really learned how to organize and plan parties and events. Um, so we got on the phones and we we got donate people donated or loaned house plants of all sizes and at that time my aunt Charlotte Bagwell was here and she had big potted plants and she I don't know how many we borrowed from her and tr potted trees and we lined the walls as much as we could with the plants and um, and then I, I don't know where she got these either but we had red crushed red velvet drapes That's, yeah. and somebody loaned them to us so we hung those on the the back of the bandstand with some lace tape you know fake lace window yeah. covering yeah, yeah. and we had a table and with a kerosene lamp and a rocking chair or a high back chair and she wore the most beautiful blue light blue dress and she just billowed out and um, she put on a show she sang she must have had music a with her yeah, a background yeah, music because I hadn't thought about that but yeah. she, there was and she she sang and it was just fantastic and we had Every, you know, we had advertised, we made handmade posters because we had no computers then. And we put posters all over Animus, Douglas, Portal. And Did people we, come from all over we filled the room. Yeah. We filled the room. Yeah. And people wore long gowns and suit and tie. And it was, oh my God. It was a wonderful quite a, yeah, it was oh. quite a, a memory. Yeah. But she, uh, and, and I've, I've, I have pictures from that, too, and I look at the crowd, and there's Doc Pugsley and Mrs. Yeah. Pugsley from Portal were there, and um, uh, Junior Gomez's mother and dad were there, and yeah. uh, just so many different people. Um, and we even had the Baptist minister and his wife in the crowd, and that was fun. <laughs> Well, we had, I, I remember one year my, my mom said, we need to do something for Valentine's Day. So we put on a brunch and she had special tablecloths made to decorate the tables. I mean, she never missed a beat. Um, we, one year was the bicentennial mm -hmm. and we didn't have the community center yet here in Rodeo. But the ladies in Rodeo decided they wanted to do something for that. And there was a wagon train coming through so it was in what 1976 there was a wagon train that was coming across the country yep. and they came through rodeo wow. so we had we put on quite a a deal for them a welcoming committee and yeah. um, we decided to have a, a band a dance at, at the bar and Somebody, I think there was barbecue somewhere. I don't know. I can't remember what was happening outside the bar, but yeah. we had to decorate the dance hall for the event. And um, I remember hanging streamers of crepe paper and trying to fashion a, an American flag across oh. the ceiling with right. streamers. That was quite a, a task, but we did it because we had time and and we energy. Energy, yeah. <laughs> So, creativity. And creativity, and they came through, and everyone, we wore 
costumes and it was just fantastic and I the the New Mexico wagon the head of the wagon yeah, yeah, anyway yeah. he he I have pictures with him and he gave me a silver dollar uh, to oh. as a keepsake and um, and I'm somehow one of them off that wagon gave me a because I had horses and they gave me a, a harness like a yoke from a uh -huh. Um, a, a wagon uh -huh. with a mirror in it, huh. and I had that for years and years and years. What did you do for fun as a girl growing up? As a girl, um, <laughs> I I like to talk, so <laughs> I was known pretty much for making. I had a round that I made in town. <laughs> These are good memories. <laughs> uh, that's the way I'm taking them. <laughs> Um, if I was, m my mom would send, a, send me down to the store to get a loaf of bread or whatever. And about an hour later, she would call the store and she'd say, is she still there? <laughs> and the store is about two, three blocks? From Just two home. blocks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, custom, custom, well, Don and Sue Robinson owned the store before the Mozzies owned it, okay. and they had a daughter, Trina Robison, and she and I went grew up together, and she and I still stay in touch. Um, but they sold it to Custy and Lloyd Mozzie, and Custy, if you've heard anyone talk about her, she was an amazing woman. She was fun and crazy, and she just laughed very easily, and um, so I hung out a lot with Custy and so I she would the phone would ring and I would grab my stuff and she'd say I, as I was leaving she'd say she just left she just left Nancy she's she's on her way home <laughs> <laughs> but on a day where I was just doing my thing I would ride my bike down to the post office and I would visit with um, Adeline Miller who was the postmaster at that time Bill um, do you know Bill Miller Mm -hmm. Junior, his mother, yeah. was the postmaster, yeah. and Audrey Miller was her relief. So one of them would be in there, and I would go and hang out with them, yeah. and admired them so much. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Audrey and Adeline were a, a real inspiration to me. I don't know why, in particularly, but they just they just were, and. Um, because of them, I was one to work in a post office. Yeah. It was a, like a little dream I had. Yeah, yeah. And eventually I did. Oh. I worked at the Animus Post Office for seven years. Oh. So um, so they, they were a big influence for it. And I always think they must have dreaded to see me come in because I would just hang out and I would chat. And they were always very good to me. They never ran me off. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they were you know, like another daughter to them. I'm sure, you know? Probably. I, I like to think so. And then I would make my way to the store, and then I would go around the corner, and um, uh, Buford and Vivian Martin lived. Um, there's the grocery store, and then there's the old where the old hotel was, okay. and then across the street was, is that building that's on the corner. That was the Martins, and he had a tire shop, and there was gas pumps in front. And they lived back behind in the back part of that building, and she had the most beautiful yard. It was just like a little paradise. And she had trees and flowers, and she fed the birds, and she raised bees. Uh. So when she, would, when she would see me, she'd say, Jill, I'm going to raid the... the uh, B, I'm going to raid the bees next week, so make sure you come by. So I would plan it, and oftentimes Trina and I would go together, and we would go, go past, by there, and she would call us in, and she would give us Dixie cups full of honeycomb. Yeah, yeah. So that was, of course, we were a sticky mess by the time <laughs> we got home. We'd have to hose our bikes off, but it was a wonderful thing. And then I would go on around, and... A.L. Hoggett. You're bringing up a lot of memories. I do that. <laughs>
um, A.L. Hoggett and Annie Hoggett lived on the corner going up the cemetery road. Okay. The house is still there. I'm yeah. not sure who owns it now. And she, Mrs. Hoggett always, we called her A.L. or Mrs. Hoggett. Mm -hmm. She always wore, her hair was real white and she was a ranch woman. Uh -huh. And she wore a, a handkerchief over her hair all the time, a bandana. And she always wore her a button-up shirt. It was always buttoned up to the top. And she always had her long sleeves down, protecting her skin. Huh. And she would be out. She always had iris and oh. various flowers growing out there. So she would um, see, a, see me, and she would come call me, and I would come by. and <laughs> I miss these people. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Would you ever do things with them? Or, well, you did the bees. Well, the yeah, the bees, but um, Mrs. Hoggett would always come in, call me in, and she would be, she'd say, come in, and she would go out in and get a pair of scissors and some paper towels, and she would wrap up a bouquet of flowers for me. Oh. It was a good life. Yeah. And in those days, people sat outside and visited, and people yeah. would walk, by, you know, they'd walk down this highway and yeah. down the back road and would see each other on the sitting out in the, and would join them or they yeah. would join us yeah. and we'd have a glass of iced tea or whatever yeah. Yeah. so wow. um so there's there's just so many good memories and it's hard to to talk about it without stirring yeah. a lot of emotion at halloween we would all dress up and we trick-or-treated all the entire town right. and we were safe and our parents didn't go with us, they just turned us loose. And we made our way around and with Mrs. Gomez, she always made us come in the house. And Mrs. Samosa, who lived right behind the bar, that was uh, Victor's mom and dad. Okay. They always made us come in the house. We couldn't just stay outside and they had to look at our costumes. Uh -huh. And they would have us turn around and <laughs> demonstrate. Okay, so then they would give us our treats. And um, Mrs. Mrs. Gomez always had homemade stuff. There was, she always made popcorn balls or cookies or things like that. And one, one year she gave out sweet tamales. It was the first, first time I ever had a sweet tamale. And I ate it because she gave it to me, but I didn't like it. Yeah. And I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other... Um memories of back at the bar? Yeah, um, well, we saw a lot of people. My mom always told us, and I, I talk about my mom the most when it comes to the bar because my dad worked away. I was going to ask you that yes. because you had never mentioned it. Yes, he and I, my dad and I were very, very, very close. And, um, but he worked construction. Oh. many of those years and he was gone during the week and he would come home on weekends um, sometimes he'd be home once a month mm -hmm. um, so when I when I refer to those days it was a lot of my mother running the bar mm -hmm. and um, and I and I say she she really ran a tight ship because she was there a lot by herself she run raising three girls yeah. So she had to really be careful about what we saw and yeah. what, was, what we were exposed to. Yeah, she true. always said to us, this is our livelihood. So whatever you see here has to stay here. And she said, if you see something that's not right and you need to talk about it, you come to Daddy or me. Yeah. Don't discuss it with anyone else. So we had a lot of teachers from our school who would come here so we would see, you know, and there was nothing wrong with what they were doing, no, but, but we could have turned it into something. So she said, if you see people here, you, you don't talk about it anywhere else. So we learned at an early age to keep quiet and not gossip. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So we did see a lot of our teachers there, and that was fine. There was nothing wrong. We saw a lot of people, men with women who weren't their wives. And that was that was always a disappointing thing, yeah. but it was just something that you know, if we wanted to talk about it, we talked about it with our parents. 
um, we, we had a couple of incidences. I remember when I was really little, um, Billy Darnell, who became sheriff. I don't know if he was sheriff at the time. I think he might have been a deputy, but he investigated it because there was a, somebody had come in and there was a shooting that happened. And I think there were just shots fired. I don't think any, anyone was actually shot. But I, I had seen the person drop something. So, um, and when it happened, my mother was just trying to collect us to get us behind walls in case a bullet came through. And it was a domestic thing. So Billy Darnell came in and questioned me. And he, I remember, took me out on his shoulders mm. and tried to get me to find, you know, show him where I had seen this. I don't remember if they ever found anything or not. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, those were those yeah. were things that, you know, nothing bad happened to us, but yeah. it was just Tough it was different than what a normal kid would See. experience. Yeah. Were there at the time you were there? Was the railroad still there? Or no, it was gone. No, like the railroad was gone. I think they pulled that up in '61. Okay. And I, I think. And I came along in '62. Yeah, the do. trains, the buildings were still there when I was a kid. Uh -huh. um, we, we used to like to try to get into them, but we we were not allowed to. My my parents were pretty strict with us, and yeah. they just knew that there was some possibility of some floors falling in or roofs falling in. Um, we I do remember the the uh, overpass, and we spent a lot of time. On the overpass, that was fun. Just it was probably dangerous. Play yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, the road was still there. It, was still it went there. over the overpass. Yeah, yeah. So we rode our bicycles up the overpass and or to, walked. And the my dad, talking about my dad, he yeah. drove an old '62 Chevy pickup, yeah. and he had a a silver rounded camper that went on the back, and Everybody knew that truck and camper, and he drove about 50 miles an hour wherever he went. And he lived in that camper during the week. But anyway, he was gone so much, and when I knew he was coming home from from the window in our living room, we could we could see the the overpass, and mm -hmm. I would see him come across that overpass, and oh my gosh, I was so excited, and I'd run outside and wait. And it took forever for him to get around that curve that comes right in front of, well, it used to come in front of Junior Gomez's house. Um, and I thought it would never get around that curve, and he'd finally show up. The, there was a mound, of, a big mound of dirt. Um, I, when I was little, I didn't know what it was for. I've since learned that that's where the water tank sat. And okay. it, was, it was closer to the middle of rodeo. Yeah. That was a fun thing, because we, we're always climbing up on that and riding our bikes down it, and you know we had plenty of skinned up knees and elbows. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the Bagwells or? Um, or sure, people? Edward Bagwell okay. um, was my un great uncle. Oh. He, um, my mother's mother, is Mer was Merle Dean. She was originally she was Merle Bagwell. Mm -hmm. And she married Mer uh, my grandfather Dean, mm -hmm. and when they they all lived in El Paso and Tularosa, and then um, my great grandparents Jay and Mary Dean uh, or Mary Bagwell, excuse me, lived in El Paso, and my uncle Edward. And Phil Bagwell, a lot of people here know him as Jigs. Um, they they had been in the military, and they came back and they they wanted their parents to be out of El Paso. They wanted them to get them in a more rural area. And Phil and Edward had found this ranch up here in Portal, and they wanted to buy it, so they did and they uprooted their parents and brought them with them. I shouldn't say uprooted, but they relocated them. 
In the, I would say in the 50s. Okay. That, so they bought the hotel. Oh, at the same time. At the same time. And that's, what, so they placed their parents there. Uh -huh. And that's, they were running the hotel. So it, um, Edward m married Charlotte Bagwell, who's from South Carolina. She was a beautiful, beautiful woman. And they had several kids. They had five, six, five or six kids. And um, they were all raised here. Jiggs married um, Frances Bagwell, who was, they settled in Douglas. And then they had, um, I think you might know Myrtle, Red and Mercy Bagwell, uh, Young. Heard the name. Okay, they have, a, they have the ranch here. They have the original ranch now. They're, they've kept it in the family. And they, um, there's three girls and a boy. His name is Phil, Philip, and we all knew, he grew up as cowpoke to us. <laughs> so um, they eventually divorced, and he married Jessie Bagwell, who was a nurse and worked at the Douglas Hospital. And her daughter and I, we were, we called ourselves cousins, but she was actually my mother's cousin, but we were the same age. And um, so they lived here for years, and then Jiggs, they finally moved back to Douglas, and they had a place there, and he ran a, a mobile home park, and he had a catfish farm, and um, so, and then the, ba the, uh, the rest of the Bagwells mo all moved to Las Cruces, and so all of Charlotte and Edward's kids are there. Mm -hmm. Did, when you were growing up, did you <coughs> ever get up to Portal? We went to Portal to have picnics and play in the creek. Yeah. And my mother was always very spontaneous, and she'd say, let's grab some, grab some stuff for our lunch, or, and we're, let's go to Portal. So we'd throw things in a paper bag, and we'd cheese and crackers and yeah. whatever we yeah. could find. Yeah, good and, things, anything. Uh -huh. find. Yeah. yeah, and off we would go, and we would take a blanket, and we would find some place that wasn't occupied, and um, we'd have a picnic and play in the creek, and yeah. we'd usually grab one or two kids from town just so it was something to do. A couple of times we went up to um, my, my Aunt Jessie, had a sister, Isabel. No, Isabel. They were from Canada, yeah. but she had married Cyril Hicks, and I can't tell you where he was from, but they owned the, no. the Cape Creek cabins. The, uh, the what's called Cave Creek Ranch. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, they owned those, oh. and they had a pool. It was oh. it was cold, <laughs> <laughs> but we would often go up there and go swimming, oh. and on occasions we would spend the night in one of the cabins, oh. and that was adventure. that was always fun. It was yeah. just in our backyard, but it was yeah. a big deal to yeah. us. Oh, yeah. We learned. I, I speak for myself, I learned to swim in a dirt tank. Well, it's just a big hole in the ground that holds water for cattle. They would irrigate and they would fill it up okay. with a pump. Okay. And Rosie and Harry Turner, they had a farm, and the, the, the place is just south of Rodeo. And Joyce and Jopi Holden owned it first, and then they sold it out to Harry and um, Rosie Turner. And we, of course, everybody knew everybody, and so we would go out there and swim. And there was a, a wooden dock that went out oh. over the... It was a, it was a big tank, I and mean, you could put a little boat on it. And it had a, a little wooden dock, and um, we would go out and swim, and we would play in the irrigation ditches, and we'd catch tadpoles, minnows and tadpoles. Yeah. That was always... That's a huge memory for me. That was a fun, fun thing to catch yeah. the little tadpoles and play with them. And yeah. um, if you could catch them half developed into a toad already, that was they exciting. Tail, they had yeah, a tail yeah. and yeah, yeah. legs. Yeah, and yeah. she was a very, my mom was very protective. Oh. So we, we were allowed to run around town by ourselves. But yeah. when it was something like that, she was pretty much with us. Yeah. Um, my aunt, her sister, who was kind of a second mother to us, told me that she remembers 
how hard it was to get me out of that dirt tank because no one else could swim. Oh. <laughs> and I would swim out far enough and just laugh at them because they couldn't come and get me. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't be ready to go home or I'd hide under the dock. And yeah. I remember that being very mossy and slimy, and, yeah. but it didn't bother us. Yeah. So those were fun, oh, fun swimming memories. In the swimming in the desert and running along the irrigation they, the ones that had concrete, I, we would put our leg, oh. feet on either side and we would run along. And there was a lot of cotton was being grown in those days. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of cotton here and in, in Cotton City. Yeah. It, there was just fields, and acres and acres and acres of cotton. Yeah. We used to, one of my friends, girlfriends, had a, her dad was a farmer and had farms here and over there, De, um, Devon Richens, big family. Mm -hmm. They had... Um, one, I remember one year, I got to go over and help them stomp cotton. Oh, cool. And I had always heard them talk about it, and I just wanted to do it so bad. Cool. So, as the machines would col you know, collect the cotton, yeah. and it would run it through the combine or whatever, yeah. it would dump it into these trailers, these wire trailers. Okay. And, oh, stomping it down and we would stomp down. it down. So they would, he would ha let all the kids come in and play in it. And sure. we would, we would yeah. stomp it down so yeah. he could add more. more. Just pack it, yes, <laughs> it was great fun. We used to build <laughs> tunnels fun. down in through the cotton, and we would dig a hole. We had to hide our eyes, and somebody would dig a hole and then lightly cover it up, and then the rest of us fun. had to find it, and we would disappear oh. into the cotton. Oh, I keep thinking what a wonderful uh, childhood growing up. It was. You know? It was a. Oh. I always I wanted to raise my kids here, mm -hmm. but it was it wasn't possible because yeah. you know jobs take you elsewhere. Yeah. And we were yeah. in the county, but we couldn't be here. Yeah. Um, but it was I don't I, you probably can't you can't replicate something like that anyway. You have to make your own yeah your own memories. Yeah. At that time, um, there were three churches. In town, the what is now the art museum was okay. now, I think it was the Episcopal Church, uh -huh. and my sister chose to go there. Um, I chose to go to the little Baptist church on the back street, <laughs> and um, my parents did not go to church, but we did. Why did you go to the Baptist church? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. It was, yeah, nicer it, building. Or I don't know, yeah. I, they had Sunday school. Yeah. That's oh, probably why. Yeah, yeah. Right, the Catholic the Church was there. Yes, with, their yeah. their parents started that and built, built it, and, yeah. and that's where now I go. Yeah. So I've yeah. I've been around to several churches yeah. <laughs> in rodeo, but the um, the little Baptist church was was always a fun little church, and they had and it, when I was a teenager, I in high school I learned to play the guitar. So for a time. I helped with the music there, uh -huh. and um, but when I was little, they had Sunday school and Bible school in the summer, and yeah. it was it was a great place. And my and my dad would always encourage me. He when he was home, he would say, "Are you going to go to Sunday school?" And I'd say, "No, I don't think so." And he'd say, "Well, you're going to probably miss something important. You got to go." So he would he wouldn't push me. He they never pushed, but they encouraged, mm -hmm. which I always felt found interesting being raised in a bar, they, they never went to church, right. but they believed in God. Yeah. So they had no understanding of their own faith, yeah. but they wanted us to. to they go. encouraged us. They must have thought that was good in it. Yes, and they always wanted us to go. And they, Even though maybe they didn't know what was good in it. I, they, I, don't, I don't think they really... Yeah. My mother went to school, a Catholic school when she was her high school years in El Paso. Uh -huh. Uh, Loretto Academy, but it never, it didn't stay with her. She never continued after she left there, but, but yeah, they always wanted us to be yeah, in church, and I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. And my, my, um, my dad used to encourage us, and he, my, both my mom and dad drank and smoked, and eventually they quit, thank goodness. But all the years that I was growing up, they both drank and smoked. And as I was growing, getting older and coming into my teen years, um, he used to say, 
I remember sitting at the bar with him on a weekend. It was just he and I. And talking about just society problems and growing up problems and things. And he said, you know, you know what drinking does to you. And you know what smoking does to you because you've watched. So he said, don't make those mistakes. Make your own. He said, do something that, that you don't know anything about. He said, because we're all going to make mistakes. But just don't, don't make the same ones that, you, that you've seen us make. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. At that time, when I graduated high school, um, the thing was to, to, everyone was supposed to go to college. I didn't want to. I had no desire to, but we, were, we had to. It was expected. So I went for a year in Las Cruces, and it just swallowed me up and spit me out. It was, it was, and I tell people, don't force your kids to go to college. Um, I would have probably been better off doing a trade school or something. But I real, my heart's desire was to get married and have a family. And by then I had met Bill, and we were, we were good friends. We were best friends. He was kind of the brother I never had. And we knew each other for about five years. And he attended bar for us, actually. And oh, that's, where that. we, that's where we met. Oh, so our, my running, my little joke is that he married the bar fly and I married the hired help. <laughs> and nobody thought it would work. Yeah. And, and you it guys worked. have been married how long? 36 years. Yep. Go. And you have? Two kids. Two kids. Yes. And, and how old are they? Or? Mark is um, 31. He just turned 31 in May. And then Catherine just turned 27 in January. Yeah. And we have five grandkids. Yeah. Oh. So it's been a good thing. We got married in Douglas. Yes. At, um, and then we've, for less than a year, we moved up to Farmington. Um, Bill had a had been living up there for a short time and he had gotten a job at a greenhouse, a nursery. And he was there and so we, we went up, we moved up there and I was working for a veterinarian. And, and then he wanted really bad to get into law enforcement. He had been, he had worked here for the Forest Service. And prior to that, he's from back east and he had worked as a park ranger. So he had this little taste of law enforcement and his family are big public servants the whole family so that's something he was really interested in and Billy Darnell was sheriff at the time so and he and Bill had gone way back in their history so Billy told him there's an opening for a dispatcher you could get your foot in the door so we came back here and for a short time, we lived up in Portal because that's where we we just needed a place to be, mm -hmm. and uh, we lived right close to the research station. Mm -hmm. And um, he drove back and forth to Lordsburg every day, and that was mm -hmm. really difficult. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I was miserable because I was from rodeo, and being up there in the amongst all those trees was just. I did you not like, like it. it. I hated it. I hated it. Oh. It was, I was so, that was probably the most miserable I've ever been in our married life. Just, huh. unfortunately, that's, it was just for a few months. Yeah, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I liked yeah. being in the valley so I could see the mountains yeah. and I could go visit the trees, but I wanted to be back in the valley. So then we moved, um, we finally moved to Lordsburg and he worked as a dispatcher until an opening came up as a deputy, and and he worked as a deputy and for a year, and then went to the ca police academy, and and then we just kind of were moved around the county wherever he was needed. That's where we went. So we we lived in Lordsburg, we lived in um, many farms, which is north of Playas. We lived in Hatchita, which is actually Grant County, but it was patrolled at that time by us. And then eventually we moved, um, they wanted a resident deputy in Plyus. So we moved in plot to Plyus and we lived there the longest that we had ever lived anywhere. Um, we were there for about 10 or 
12 years. I can't remember. I'd have yeah. to have to do the math. But yeah. we lived there until we bought this place. And, and when did you come here? To we've been here 10 years. It'll be 10 years. Yeah, yeah 10 years. Um, originally, my, my dad was raised in the ranch in Animas, south of Animas. And it was in our family since mm. the late 20s. Mm. And... Um, I really wanted to be there. That's where I thought I wanted to build a home. We went as far as drilling a new well and putting the power in, and we had our, our plan, the uh, house plans done, and things just started not feeling right, mm -hmm. and um, there was a lot of illegal activity that was happening down there. They were, the Border Patrol were finding a lot of things on our property where they were bringing drugs across and dropping off. Mm. And at that time, our daughter was a junior in, the, in high school and she was spending two or three hours alone in the evening. And I just felt very, very nervous about even me being down there by myself, but especially her. Again, I was just having all these reservations. And I said to Bill, I said, you know, I don't know what we're thinking because she was gonna be graduating in two years. Our ties with the school would be gone, right. and our heart was here in rodeo. Yeah. And Bill was very involved in the Fourth of well, we both were, but especially Bill was really involved in the Fourth of July parade. In rodeo. In rodeo, and um, it's just where our heart was. So I said, you know, it's silly for us to build a house there. We were coming to church here. Mm. So we, our daughter, one son, it was January 1st, was a, is a feast day in the Catholic Church. And she asked if we could go to church. And we normally didn't go on those days because it was a long ways to drive and we were usually working. And, but it worked out that we could go. And she said, can we go on, on this day? And I said, sure. So we, again, why would you say no to that with a kid? <laughs> So we came over to church in Rodeo, and Guy and Audrey Miller lived here. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen them in a while. She had been sick. So I called her. We didn't have cell service in Rodeo, so I called her from Animus and said, we're going to be in town. Can we come by and see you? And they had been trying to get us to buy this place off and on, and we said, absolutely not. No way. We've already got the well drilled. It's a done deal. So, but they kept hounding us. <laughs> so we came after church, we stopped back by, and um, before we came in, we set the rules. We are not even going to discuss this. We're just no. going to visit, visit, and that's it. Okay. We should have shook on it, but we didn't. <laughs> and... We came in and visited, and Audrey had been very, very sick, and I didn't realize that. She ended up in the hospital the next day. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow, we agreed to buy this place. That day? That day. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Huh. After we got back in the car, our daughter said, what just happened? And I said, <laughs> I don't know, but we just agreed to buy the place. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. But we did. And we've been here ever since, and we've oh, loved yeah. it. And Autumn was all used to be my favorite time of year uh -huh. until now. <laughs> and there's so many trees here, and the leaves fall. And oh, that's oh. and Oxy and Andy Ramirez always took care of this place for them. And I said, Oxy, why didn't you tell me? And she said, You never asked. <laughs> I would have told you if you would have asked. I'm like, ah. But it's yeah. it's been. Wonderful. We we love it here, yeah. and our yeah, family loves here. it here, yeah. and it's a lot of work for two people. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we didn't, uh, so people know, you rent out two cabins here. That's well, yes, part of the work. yes, and the Millers didn't do that. Guy always wanted to, but Audrey yeah. wouldn't yeah. hear of it. Yeah. Um, but there's the two buildings, and up until late last year, we had the third, the, oh. the home that Millers oh. had, for the last two years of their life yeah. that we've rented out. And Bill has taken this and just 
really built it up into something amazing. It's a, it's a great business, and he's, he's just made for it. He knows the history of the area. He knows birds. He knows a little bit about a lot of things, enough to really um, entertain people and keep them coming. And, yeah. um, and he's had a website built up for us, and it's just really taken off. And yeah. So April, May, and June, March, April, and May, are crazy. It's just nonstop. There's no, there's no days off. 